if we were to understand what we are doing, what, you know, what, what's, what's happening when we're learning Torah, we would not be able to, um, we wouldn't be able to exist. That's how, that's how great learning Torah is. The level, of, uh, the level of Hashem which is present within Torah, which we are experiencing, is so great <coughs> that if we were able to appreciate what's really happening, we would have what's called Klesa Nefesh. We just, um, we'd evaporate. Our Neshamas would leave the goof. But Baruch Hashem, we're so insensitive, we're so unaware. <laughs> as, given, uh, as we gave an example, uh, I think at different times, like imagine like a little dog that goes in the Louvre and passes by the Mona Lisa. That's, you know, has absolutely no appreciation for the fact that, that it's passing by right now. You know, the, the most famous painting um, in the world. But if you're a dog, you don't get it. <laughs> and our experience of learning Torah is something along those lines. But it doesn't change the fact that that's what it is. The fact that we can't really fully experience it doesn't change the fact that at this moment we're learning Torah, we're doing mitzvahs, we're interacting with the locus, with godliness, which is completely above and beyond this world. Because Torah and mitzvahs are, are, are beyond this world. And as I think we mentioned on several occasions, the... the with the Rebbe, with the mashal that the Rebbe would give quite frequently and to the point that the Rebbe wouldn't even say the whole mashal, the Rebbe would just say the punchline and everyone knew what he was talking about the mashal is that you had um, you have some wise people they're going, in, they're going, they're, they're going in a wagon and their, their destination is a conference where they're going to be talking about uh, the greatest things, about malachim they're going to be talking about malachim so you have the wise people, they're sitting in the carriage and they know where they're headed, they know why they're headed there and their conversation is all about the Malachim. They're talking about in preparation for this conference about Malachim. And then, driving the wagon is you have the wagon driver. The wagon driver has no clue about Malachim, what Malachim are. And uh, you ask the wagon driver, what's the purpose of this trip? And the wagon driver says, the purpose of this trip is because... Uh, when we get to our destination, I'm going to get a few ruble, and I'm going to buy some vodka, and I'm going to get drunk. So the purpose of the, of the trip is that I should get drunk. And then you have the horses that are leading the carriage, and what's going on in their minds. They definitely have no concept of malachim. And they're thinking that the reason why that they're going on this trip is because there is, in Yiddish it's called haber. Haber means uh, hey. animal feed, hay, right? at the destination, so they're all going to the destination, so they, they should be able to have their haber, their hay. Good meal. <laughs> and the punchline is, as we bow does the fair tracht in haber, just because the horses are thinking about hay, that's their limitation, the only thing they can think about is hay. Does that change the fact that they're, whether or not they're malachim? It's the fact. So they don't get it, they don't understand it, they can't appreciate it, it doesn't change the fact. A lot of times by Fabrega, the Rebbe would say, you know, so we don't get it, we don't appreciate it, we, we don't appreciate it.